there! You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Can you think of something that you are really good at doing? Hmm, many aren't sure yet, Bear. Well, Dylan really likes to draw and think about robots. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what will happen when Dylan draws the largest, most magnificent robot ever. Will he come to life? Dylan and his magical robot by Saul Regwan. Dylan had the most amazing imagination. He would often show it through his drawings and paintings whenever he got the chance. He especially loved to use colored pencils to color in what he drew. As a matter of fact, every time Dylan created a colored drawing, he would display it by taping it to the wall above his bed. Apart from his passion for drawing, Dylan loved robots. He was fascinated by them. The way they stood, the expression on their faces, as well as the way they were built. He imagined what they would say and do if they could talk and move. He had a collection of every toy robot his daddy had given him. He would display them proudly on top of his toy chest. One night, just before his bedtime, Dylan decided to tape four large pieces of white construction paper together. On the large poster he had created, Dylan began drawing the largest, most magnificent robot he could. He then colored it silver with blue feet and blue hands. He colored its eyes red and gave it a yellow mouth. Before he climbed into bed, he gave his poster one last look. Dylan lifted the poster and placed it over his desk. No sooner was his masterpiece complete, his daddy came in to tell Dylan that it was his bedtime. It's time for bed, sweet Dylan. Sweet dreams, my little prince. I love you, said his dad as he kissed him goodnight. The next morning, Dylan awoke and looked for his robot drawing. He could not find it anywhere. He searched his room, under the bed, behind the curtains, in the closet, nothing. He searched the living room, the kitchen, and the den. It was gone. No trace of his drawing anywhere. Where could it have vanished to? Thought Dylan as he made his way to the bathroom. Lo and behold, as he opened the door, he saw a sight that completely startled him. It was his robot drawing come to life. Towering over him, the big silver robot with the red eyes and yellow mouth approached him slowly, saying in a voice that sounded like clink, clack, chink, I am Robbie, your robot and I am here to do whatever you want me to do. Without any hesitation, Dylan took his robot by the hand and led him outside to his backyard. Let's play tetherball. I will show you how to play, said Dylan. I know how to play, replied Robbie, as Dylan struck the ball as hard as he could. Before the ball had a chance to swing around once, Robbie swatted the ball so hard that it detached from the rope while the pole collapsed on the ground. 
it's okay, Robbie. Maybe tetherball is not your game. Let's play something else, said Dylan. Dylan grabbed his football and told Robbie to hold out his arms and catch it. Robbie held out his arms and missed the ball as it rolled on the grass. Dylan tried over and over, but Robbie just couldn't catch the football. How about we head down to the park and play on the seesaw, asked Dylan. Robbie nodded and followed Dylan to the park. As they entered the park, the children there stopped playing and stared at the magnificent robot. After a moment, they all ran up to Dylan and his robot. Dylan had an idea. He got Robbie to sit on one side of the seesaw and got the other kids to sit together on the other side of it. One little problem. Robbie was too heavy at his end and the kids at the other end were suspended in the air. Get us down, shouted the kids. Get off the seesaw. But as Robbie got off, the children tumbled and fell off the seesaw. Dylan felt embarrassed and took his robot home. As they were walking back, Dylan asked Robbie, is there anything you can do without breaking something? Robbie kept silent and went home with Dylan with his head held low. He was sad that the day had turned into a disaster with his best friend. Dylan picked up his colored pencils and construction paper and began doodling. He drew different shapes and patterns and colored them in while Robbie watched. After a while, Robbie picked up a sheet of paper and some colored pencils. Lo and behold, Robbie turned out to be quite an artist. He drew the adventures he and Dylan had shared that day. He drew them playing tetherball. He drew them playing football together. And he drew their adventure in the park. Looking at Robbie's amazing drawings, Dylan was extremely impressed. How did you learn to draw like that? Robbie gave him a smile and answered, there is something we are all very good at. We just have to believe in ourselves and it will show up. With that, Dylan hugged his new best friend so tight that he didn't want to let go. Dylan fell asleep in his robot's arms as Robbie looked at him, smiling proudly. After a while, Dylan awoke holding four large pieces of construction paper taped together. On the poster was a huge picture of the most magnificent robot he had ever seen. The End Bear's wondering, how did Robbie become Dylan's best friend? Hmm. Could Robbie do everything Dylan did? No. But did Robbie give up or keep trying to find something he was good at doing with Dylan? Yes, he kept trying. Bear's asking if best friends try to help each other be magnificent. A lot of yeses. Do you think Dylan will keep trying to? Well, Bear hopes you come back soon for more adventures in believing in yourself. Bye for now. Please subscribe.